I'm sorry I was not able to post a uh, vlog uh, in the past few weeks, couple of weeks. And uh, it's because I went to uh, Connecticut to visit my son. But today we're going to address something that sort of bothered me uh, based on the comments uh, that were posted on my latest vlog. So stay with me, that's what we'll talk about. In my previous vlog, I talked about why some people are getting so excited about the appreciation on their real estate, on their condominium or whatnot. Now, I am not saying that you should not invest, if I may use the word invest, in your own privately owned condominium or house and lot, residential property. I think you should. If you can afford it, you should. Because what it does is it minimizes the amount of what otherwise you would have spent in terms of rental or staying in a hotel or whatnot. The other consideration you have to think about is whether you're willing to rent this private home place that you call your home and turn it into a rental property while at the same time staying there when you're in the Philippines. Some people, like myself, are not willing to do that. My home is my home and that's sacred to me. My rental property is my investment to generate income. I do a separation between the two. That's not to say you should not combine both. It's up to you. It's a personal choice you have to make. But let's talk about something that sort of bothers me because of some of the comments and that is they talk about oh, or find out the value of your real estate by looking at the zonal values etc etc. So what I want to talk about is what is the difference between Fair market value, zonal value, assessed value. So let's start. Market value. What's market value? Market value refers to the estimated price at which a property would sell in the current real estate market. It is determined by various factors, including the property's location, size, condition, amenities, and recent sales comparable properties in the area. Market value can fluctuate over time due to changes in market conditions, property improvements, and other external factors. Now, what is assessed value? On the other hand, assessed value is the value assigned to a property by local tax assessor's office for the purpose of calculating property taxes. It is usually a percentage of the property's market value. The assessed value is used to determine the amount of property tax you owe to the local taxing authority. So let's say your fair market value is 1 million. If their policy is to value your property or assess your property at 80%, then they will say the assessed value is only 800,000 pesos. Did they say dollars? I meant pesos. 1 million down to 800,000. And the reason for that I understand is so homeowners do not complain, hey, gee, my property is only worth 1 million. How come it's being assessed at 1.2 million? So to avoid that argument, they knock it down to a lower percentage of the fair market value. Philippines, this is the first time I heard of zonal value, okay? Philippines, there is a third one, it's called the zonal value, which we will discuss briefly, briefly later. Key differences. Purpose. The market value is used in real estate transactions such as buying or selling a property. Assessed value, on the other hand, is solely for tax purposes. Determination, market value is determined by real estate professionals, appraisers, or through comparative market analysis done by realtors in the United States. Assessed value, however, is determined by local tax assessor's office based on their assessment methods and guidelines. Sometimes assessed value is equivalent to discounted amount of the fair market value as I explained before. Fluctuation. Market value can change frequently due to market conditions, property improvements, or other factors. Assessed value, on the other hand, is typically reassessed periodically in the Philippines every three years, usually annually or even few years, and may not always reflect the current market value. Now, there are five types of valuation methods, but we will not delve into this too much. 
it's the so-called cost approach. How much would it cost for us to rebuild this property today? That's the cost approach. Sales comparison approach, this is 90% of all the appraisals being done. They compare on real, on real estate, on, I mean on residential properties, that is. They compare how much similar properties of similar size in similar location sold for usually in the past six months. But if there is none, no comparable available, they may go one year and then sort of increase it by inflation, inflation factor. Income capitalization approach. Well, they, they, this is usually on income producing properties. If you're renting your property only part time or it's not really your main business, meaning it's a residential property, they use the sales comparable, I mean, sales comparison approach. But the income capitalization is for those real, real businesses who invest money in order to rent. They look at the income generation and capitalize it back to a certain return and investment. Discounted cash flow is looking at a 10, 15 year horizon and discount the cash flows coming in every single year, including the terminal value of the property to determine how much today's value is. And the gross rent multiplier method is a simple way to say, gee, if I'm making a, if I'm renting it for 1 million and the uh, multiplier is, uh, let's say 12, uh, they will say, if it's 10 million a year multiplied by 12, that's 112, 120 million pesos. Okay, that's a quick way. Now, what is zone of value? Zone of valuation is both used in taxation for taxation purposes and serves as a base for computing fair market value of the property. The BIR, which who are not real estate experts, uses zone of value for calculating internal revenue taxes, particularly on capital gains tax and documentary stamp tax. They usually rely on some other source to determine what fair market value is and then take a percentage of that and say, okay, that will be the zone of value, period. That will be the basis for the tax. If zone of value is less than the selling price, take note of this. This is not suggesting that the property is overpriced. On the other hand, if the zone of value is more than the selling price, this does not mean the property being sold is undervalued, meaning ignore, ignore totally zonal values if you want to determine what is the fair market value of your properties. And this is what bothered me when people are saying, oh, you know, you can just look at the zonal value. No, you don't rely on that at all. Now, tax calculation property taxes are based on assessed value or zonal value of your property, not the market value. The tax rate is applied to the assessed value to determine your property tax bill. Therefore, if even if the market value of property increases your assessed value and subsequent tax bill may not increase at the same rate. Because that's sort of arbitrary. Why understanding the difference matters? Understanding the distinction between market value and assessed value is crucial when it comes to property taxes. By having a clear understanding of these terms, you can evaluate the fairness of your property tax assessment. If you believe that your assessed value is higher than it should be, you may have grounds for property tax appeal to potentially reduce your tax bill. Now, take a look at this. 38% of scheduled zonal values and 60% of scheduled market values are outdated. 38 and 60% outdated. Zonal and market values have not been updated in the past three years. Outdated values, therefore, do not reflect the actual market sentiment. The market assessed value or zonal value, the, the market value is less than the zonal value by 13 to 94 percent, while zonal value is less than private fair market value valuation by 5 to 930 percent. No single agency responsible for ensuring the valuation, revaluations are completed in accordance with standards, undefined standards. This is very important. Absence of a comprehensive real property electronic database to capture transactions and support regular property revaluations. In the United States, almost every transaction, not 100%, maybe 90% or 95% of all real estate transactions are kept in a database by location, by size, by amenities, everything is in there. So it's very easy to get on the computer and determine how much it is. Now, some people will say, 
oh gee, I look at the listing and they're asking for 3 million. Asking is not fair market value. Sold transaction, when there's a meeting of the minds between the buyer and the seller, that constitutes fair market value. So, to summarize this, I would suggest you ignore completely the zonal values, assess valuation, just focus on what the fair market value is. Here is the challenge that you have. Even if you ask, ask real estate agents, unless the real estate agents are very diligent in keeping a record of how much properties are selling for, they may not have the information either because you do not have the infrastructure, the information base, where all transactions are pulled together. Here in the United States, almost, and keep in mind, I said almost, 100% of transactions are in a database. So it's very easy when you talk to the agent and the agent will have complete information in their hands. They can determine how much sold for, uh, for how much, how much property sold for during the past six months, during the past three months, during the past year in a given area, bigger area by category, whether it's a single home, two-story house, condominium, etc., etc. Number of big number of bedrooms. They have comprehensive information here. This information is available to real estate agents and also to appraisers. Now, is it available to you? Well, it's somewhat available to you. The problem is when you go to these websites, Zillow, Realtor.com, you will only find houses that are currently for sale. Sometimes they will have pending, but pending this, this means it's sold, but you don't know how much it's sold for until it sells. When it sells, you have the real value, how much it actually went for. But most of the time, they're only posting asking price. Once it's closed and they have it posted, that is the real market value, not the asking price. The asking price, on the other hand, will tell you what your competition, because houses currently in the market for, show how much they want. So you know your competition, but until it sells and until the transaction closes and they don't and they publish the uh, uh, closing price, you don't really know that that th that is the information you need to determine actual fair market value. So one, ignore the tax valuation that's strictly for tax purposes and has no bearing whatsoever to fair market value. It's important for you to know that so you know what kind of tax consequence you have. Is there an opportunity here to file an appeal because it's overvalued relative to real fair market value? Maybe you can look at comparison with your neighboring houses. This is what's relevant when you look at zonal values and uh, assess value. But for selling purposes, fair market value is what you want to know because that is the dollars that you're going to receive, or the pesos that you're going to receive when you sell the property. Okay, so I hope that clarifies that. Uh, if you have any comments, feel free to uh, put it down below, uh, not only for my sake, but for the sake of other people. And uh, I'd appreciate it if you can share this posting with other people who might be of interest on the subject matter. Make it a great day, and God bless. Please do subscribe to my channel, that will help me a lot and I will appreciate your clicking like. Thank you so much. Make it a great day.